And what also, can you guys hear the blender in the background? Because I don't know who in my house is using a blender. No. I can hear it. Like, I can feel the floor shaking. Hey, everyone. It's Lay here from the Rock Creek Multicultural Center. Um, and today we're going to be doing episode four of Rock Creek Real Talk. So today um, I'm taking over for Justin, who was originally going to be the host, um, but now it's me. So hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, and today's episode is going to be on leadership and leaders overall. So before I begin, I just want to introduce um, myself further and introduce my panelist. So once again, I'm Lei. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm an equity ambassador for the Multicultural Center. And I wanted to introduce our newest member of the Rock Creek Multicultural Center, Delina. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> um, hi, my name is Delina Eob. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I guess one fun fact about me is that I have a fear of dogs. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Cause I have a fear of birds. So oh, yeah. yeah. Animals. They're scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so hi, my name is Liz Pazmino. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm also an equity ambassador for the multicultural center. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining us today. I wanted to ask though, before um, we get into each of the questions, what has been your favorite group or organization that you've worked with so far? <laughs> um, I know that for me in high school, I worked with Kaiser Permanente. Like I did a lot of volunteer work and internships and that's probably my favorite just cause like everyone there is so nice. And it's not just like something that you just go into and just do just cause it's like kind of like a mini family and you just get to know everyone and gain connections from it. Awesome, that's fun. What did you do through Kaiser? Um, so I would go there and I would just like volunteer. Like I'd bring wheelchairs for people, kind of like nursing, but just like I'd bring stuff to the nurses or the doctors for patients. Oh, cool. Dang. How about you, Liz? Um, well, for me, my experiences have been different, I guess. Um, I didn't really have, there weren't really that many um, leadership groups at my high school when I was in Ecuador. Um, but I did do some volunteer work there for a hospital, a children's hospital. I think that was an experience that I would never forget. It, it taught me a lot of things in life, just how to be humble, because most of the people that were going to that hospital were um, from like the lower class and, you know, low income. And um, I guess volunteer work always helps us like um, change the way we view things. Um, and now that I'm at the Multicultural Center, I think I this is also one of my favorites <laughs> but yeah 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 for sure I think for me the the MC is probably one of my favorites like I've I've worked for a couple organizations but I've never really experienced you know that student leader aspect until now like we really got to plan events and make the decisions and stuff and so it's really cool to just do this all as a student and and take the lead here so um, Delina, you said that you had done some leadership experience throughout high school. So um, what was your first experience um, there? Um, yeah, so my first experience, I think, was like, it was either eighth or ninth grade. I'm not really sure which one, but like there's like clubs and all these events at school. And there was this thing where teachers would ask students to like come after class, like during open houses to help and like guide new students and their parents. So that was like one of the first leadership like programs, I guess you could say that I was a part of. Nice, nice. There were, I guess there were probably a few programs, but for me in high school, that was a really long time ago also, but um, 
I was I was very different. I was kind of like the very shy, quiet, kept to him, kept to herself kid. I didn't get really like involved at many school activities just because it didn't go with my personality at the time. Um, so yeah, but then when I well after so many years and you know just growing. Um, now, when I learned about the Multicultural Center, I was like, yeah, that's probably something I'd like to do just to get more experience and stuff. I think leadership within high school for me was sort of a rocky road because <laughs> I, I remember I struggled um, to just find my place sometimes. I don't know if you guys have felt, felt that way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I, I remember trying to sort of not get involved with that because I, I didn't feel like I saw myself as a leader. But um, I think my first experience though was within um, sophomore year, sophomore, junior year, because that's when I joined the yearbook staff. And um, I got to be editor in chief for junior and senior year. And that was really fun. And I never thought that I'd do that, but that being said, um, what inspired you guys to continue leadership programs in college? Um, well, for me, since I moved here and started going to college in um, PCC, I like started learning more about different topics that I hadn't really heard of when I was back in Ecuador. I mean, the way that society here is, it's here is a little bit different and the things that are being talked about here are also different. So I was learning more and um, through the International Student Center, yeah, the International Student Center, I learned about the Multicultural Center and um, some of the topics that were being discussed there or just um, the work that they were doing. So um, I don't know, I just I just had the time also. So I, I was like, why not get involved with something that I, I know I'm gonna learn from, but I'm also gonna help other people with. So that's why I decided to, to join the MC. For me, like, I, like Liz said, I was always like a shy kid and I didn't really like to branch out but I've like my parents and everyone was always telling me, oh, you need to like branch out, talk to people. Like, it's just like a good experience for you. And so once I started the like open house events, it wasn't like too bad. Like it wasn't something that I was completely terrified of. So I just decided to continue it just to get more experience and just like have that connection with other people. It's really important for us to make connections and, and branch out, like you said, and you know, that feeling of branching out and having that satisfaction of helping others too is is really great when we get into these leadership programs. And, and that's something that inspired me as well um, to continue in college. Uh, like one of the things in, in my yearbook staff that I loved was working with other students. And, you know, in that class, there was so much to deal with and there was a lot of stress um, at some points, but knowing that I could help each other and help help others and make an impact on them was really cool. So yeah, that's that's a definitely good point. Outside of school though, um, let's get into the community and talk about leadership within the community. Uh, so how have you guys been trying to get involved with our community? I know that in COVID times, it can be pretty tough to help out sometimes because, you know, we're all socially distanced and we have to work from home. But what are ways that you guys are trying to get involved out there? Or if, if you guys haven't got involved that much, like what are ways that you've seen? I know that like before COVID times, like April, March, like I would go to my church often and I would just like help the younger kids because a lot of them are like less fortunate and some of them don't even have an education. So I just go there every Saturday and just like help them out with like math or science or just like read books to them just so like they have like a way of being comfortable and like just have a tight knit community they can always go to. And I know that recently during COVID times, like all the rioting and the protesting, I never got a chance to go to any of them because like my parents were worried they didn't want me getting sick or anything. But I know that a lot of people that I know would go out and just get involved and do those things and help their communities. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, Liz. <laughs> okay. So, well, um, for me also, I guess me being an international student, I haven't like had a long time living here. I don't know that many people other than the people that I go to school with. So um, I don't think I even have a big group of like Latinos that I know um, or anything like that. But from the people that I have met here and that have taught me a few things and just like Delina was saying, when the, um, when the protesting was going, um, I felt like I wanted to go, but at the same time, as an international student, I was really worried of maybe getting in some sort of um, situation where I couldn't like, I would probably be in a bad position, you know, and, and losing my, my, my visa or like, you know, my status here. So uh, the safest option was just to stay home and try to help out from, you know, signing petitions, sharing on, on my Instagram, sending it to other friends. Even when, even when the things went down for international students that they were saying that we were probably going to have to leave the country if we were not taking classes and things like that. Um, a lot of international students just started like all these petitions and everyone was sending them, emailing them. So um, I guess my way to help communities here and getting involved with it has been through social media and just like raise awareness through that. And um, yeah. In these crazy times, in these times of protesting and Black Lives Matter, you know, it's so important to keep the conversation going, even if we can't head out to the protests, like Delina had said. Um, you know, there are times where I really wish that I could have joined, but it's tough. Um, in our own situations, as, as students of color, sometimes it's it's tough to just go out there, um, especially if we're living with our parents or, you know, like like you said, um, they're worried for us. And this this work, this student activist work can be tough, but, you know, I'm glad that we're all trying to do our best to get involved in the communities and spread the word. And along with your guys' involvement, why do you think that is so important to you? Why do you think being involved in the community is really important? Um, I guess like one thing is because like we said before, a lot of people can't physically go out and some people might think the only way they can get involved in their community is by stepping out and going out to protest and stuff. But since there's other ways, like through social media and stuff like that, by us starting that, we can like gain more followers and like other people can see like, oh, I don't just have to go outside to be a leader. I can also post things on social media. And that just like spreads awareness to other ways to get involved. So by us starting it, we can have others join us. Yeah, when when I saw the word community, looking over these questions, I if you think about it, community can really be anything. It could be, you know, a, a city. It could be a neighborhood or, or those who follow you on social media, um, like you mentioned. Um, and so just reaching out and, and getting involved is really important because if you think about it this way, it can be easy to impact an individual person, right? So if we can do that, then that means we can also impact more people, more than one person, and therefore make a mark on our community, whether it be, again, on our social media, on in our city or neighborhood, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I find it important because we as leaders need to recognize how much of an effect that we can make on others and realize that we can utilize our community to make that effect more long lasting. Yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I guess that it's important for us to get involved in, with our communities just so that we can, because sometimes we don't know the, what other people's necessities are, what they're going through. And sometimes some of them won't speak up because they feel they're not on a safe uh, space. So if we're able to get involved and show them 
that they're on a safe space and that they have someone that they can go to for help on whatever they might be going through um, that uh, might like change someone's life. And um, I guess the more people that get involved with their communities, they, the more support others are gonna feel. So yeah, it's, it's definitely important. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely about that support. What are ways you suggest for students trying to get involved within their community? Um, I guess like we've all said this, social media, because kids these days are just always, well not kids, like also us, we're just all on social media. So like while we're on there, we can also just spread awareness instead of just using social media as entertainment. We can just spread awareness and speak up about things that we feel are important. Or even if people don't have social media, they can like make posters and just like stick them around their neighborhoods just so they don't feel like they're left out of anything. I also, well, since it's about, well, students getting involved, um, I guess trying to see whatever school you're going to, in this case, PCC, um, become more, oh, wait, how do I, I don't know the word, but just um, knowing all the centers that um, the, the, the PCC offers, like I didn't know there were like the, the queer resource centers, I didn't, center, I didn't know about that. There's a multicultural center, there's the International Student Services Center, there's um, Adelante Mujeres. There's so many different ones that students can get involved. And through that, they can even create another one or just um, let other students know about them. So, yeah. Yeah, the centers are definitely a huge part of PCC. And like you said, Liz, um, I, I didn't know either that there were these resources out for students. And so it was, it's really cool to see um, these ways that this school has been trying to get involved with students and the community. Um, I think another way too for, for students trying to get involved in our community is I think through like supporting businesses that's that was definitely something that I think we can all do really in these times many businesses are struggling um, to make ends meet so you can make a quick pit stop at a restaurant or something or purchase something while or at a store while following social distancing guidelines of course so you could definitely head out and go help out those businesses um, but I think uh, another way that, that Delina had touched on that is really important overall to get involved is just checking in on each other, whether it be through social media or um, sending a text or even sending like a physical letter through the mail. I really wish people would start doing that again. I miss letters. <laughs> um, but yeah, just checking in on each other is really important. Like we, this may seem like a time where we may be disconnected um, but let's try to bring back those connections and keep that communication going. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I had to me. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> Not everyone's going to see that on the camera, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So let's head on to leadership in our own personal lives. So through the involvement of various school and community work, what have you learned about yourself? Um, I guess one thing I learned about myself is that I'm not as shy or like not self-centered but like I'm not as shy as I think I am because I always used to think that like oh I physically can't go and talk to people or I'm gonna like feel sick or nauseous but I learned that that was just all in my head but once I start branching out and making connections like I learned that I'm I can go out and talk to anyone that I like while educating them and it's not as dif as difficult as I make it seem. Yes, yeah, I definitely relate to that. Like, like I've mentioned, I, I didn't see myself as a leader. Um, and it's, it's really tough because you, you have this preconceived idea of yourself and you, you put in your head like, oh, I can't do this, right? I, I can't initiate things. I can't lead. I can't, you know, help a group of people sometimes. But, you know, once you actually start it and you get into it, you realize like, hey, 
I'm actually doing this. Like, this is cool. I'm making an effect on people. I'm impacting people. So yeah, I, I definitely learned that, you know, I can do so much and that I, I'm not as shy as I seem. And also another thing that I think I learned was organization skills, time management skills. Um, I remember struggling with those skills throughout high school, especially in classes and stuff. And so to learn how to time manage better through working with these leadership programs was was really great because it helped me throughout my whole life. Um, and I could apply these things throughout really everything. So yeah. How about you, Liz? Um, well, um, for me, the same, basically, I've learned that I'm not as shy as I think. So at the beginning, I was worried about doing our live uh, sessions over Instagram. Um, but I think they've gone very well. Um, and I just become more excited every time to plan them out and think about what our next topics are going to be about. Um, I've also learned that I'm more like, I used to think that I was passionate about only one thing in life, which was aviation. <laughs> but now I've learned that there's many more other things that I can still like be passionate about and make, um, you know, like just make it a, a routine in my life to talk about it, to discuss it, to, you know. So um, I've learned that I can, yeah, I can definitely be, have like a, a variety of things going on in my life and still make it work. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, these times are crazy. So I'm glad that we have developed these skills through these leadership programs. And yeah. yeah, I'm just glad you guys are here <laughs> as, <laughs> as equity ambassadors of the Multicultural Center. You guys are great. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. So do you feel like a leader in your life, um, in your family, friends, peers? If so, why? I guess for me, when it comes to my family, like, I don't know, I guess it's like a stereotypical thing. Like there's always, ha there always has to be like a man in the house. And so like, yeah, like my dad is like the leader cause like he like works the most, he pays most of the bills and stuff. But like, I've learned that that doesn't necessarily mean he's the leader. Like just cause he pays the bills and does all that, that doesn't really mean he's leading us. So I feel like in some ways I'm also a leader cause like I can inform my family about things that they probably never knew about. And so that way, like I'm leading them to new topics or like, new issues that are going on in the world so I guess in some way I'm a leader in my family yeah definitely when you when you said um that that you know there has to be a man figure you're on the spot I same thing for my family it's it's just this idea of you know the dad my dad has to um, defend us has to protect us has to um feed us sometimes and it's it's crazy but you know, being in these leadership programs um, made me realize that I could be a leader like everywhere. It takes some initiative to to head out and do your own things and take action. And so I think we all can be leaders in our own lives, really. Yeah, um, for me, I guess it's I'm the older kid in my family. Well, there's only me and my brother, but I've, I feel like I've always been kind of like a leader in certain topics within my family. Like uh, my brother has always looked up to me. He, we, him and I are very close. And um, he used to be, he just turned 21, but um, he, he used to be very, very, very close-minded. And like, I've always thought of him as like an old person living in a, in a young people's <laughs> body. Um, and my parents being um, like, you know, Latino, very religious, had their own ways of thinking and like would never open up to certain things. But I was kind of always different that way. I like to bring new topics and like talk about new things that they were not really willing to bend their arm towards. And it's changed definitely over the years. And um, now my mom comes to me to certain things, you know, my dad to my brother, especially. So, yeah, I've, I've um, 
my in that way I, I felt like my parents have all me have always made me feel like I can even if I'm just I'm the kid and in the for them I can still be a leader for them in other things so mm -hmm. You, you bring up a really good point, Liz. Sometimes, you know, as young, as the younger generation, as us kids, people may not see us as leaders because, you know, we're young, we don't know much or whatever they say. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's super important that we continue to teach um, the older generation or really just anyone in general, because, you know, this is going to be our world in the future. And we continue to, to be those leaders and continue to spread the word and take action in things that we want to see change in our lives. So that's super important. Um, but in, in terms of that question, I also wanted to mention that in my group of friends, which is a very small group, <laughs> I'm not the leader. <laughs> it's yeah, there are some of my other friends have more confidence than I do. I'm still learning to build that up. Um, and so they usually take the lead. They decide where we go, what we eat and stuff sometimes. <laughs> Um, and I don't mind that. I, I also like being a follower along with a leader. So yeah, that's how it is in my friend group. <laughs> oh, wait, Jeff is wanting to enter the room. Hi, Jeff. Hey, how, how's everyone doing? Good. Hey, everyone. We've got a guest joining us. <laughs> One of our lead, our lead coordinator, Jeff. You want to introduce yourself really quick? Oh yeah, oh, it's recording right now. He's got a t-shirt on. Like, I'm just... <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, let me just put on the jacket or something. Just I mean, one second. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm worried. Am I okay? Do I look fine? Right, you guys are fine. <laughs> and what, also, can you guys hear the blender in the background? Because I don't know who in my house is using a blender. <laughs> no, I can hear it. Like I can feel the floor shaking. <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys could hear it or not. <laughs> no, I can't hear anything. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jeff. Oh, a blazer or something, just looking semi. <laughs> it's casual. All right. So, Jeff, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Hall. I'm the Multicultural uh, Center Lead Coordinator here at uh, PCC Rock Creek Campus. And I'm happy to be joining everyone on this, on this day. Awesome. So yeah, Jeff is our surprise guest today. <laughs> and um, we just wanted to ask you one question because we're going to close out the conversation soon. Um, how do you define leader? Okay. Um, I, I, I define, I, that's a really good question. Um, when it comes to leader, I, I, I define it as uh, someone who can, um, affect change by bringing the best out of everyone else. Um, There's so many different forms of leader and leaders um, and how, and their methods of leading their peers or leading a group of people that, you know, there's different methods of doing so. But um, I think a, a, a positive leader, someone who affects change by bringing forth, um, bringing out the best in everyone and, and, and the best in a way that is not, to um, is not to the detriment of tearing down someone's um, confidence. So I'm, I, with me, I personally don't believe that you you have to be insulting. I, I, I grew up playing sports and um, we all know how competitive it could be and how some, you know, coaches or teammates may uh, really get on their, their peers or get on their players to the point where it's insulting. I don't, I don't feel that's an effective way, but I do feel like a leader is honest um, and they're honest to the point where it may be something that you don't want to hear, but they're honest in a way that um, the person, whoever they're talking to is like, okay, this person wants, just wants me to do my best. And so I'm going to put forth my best effort. So uh, that's how I fit. Uh, that's how I define a uh, leader. Yeah. Awesome. All of those points are, are, really crucial in, in being a leader? Um, I guess I define leader as someone who who's willing to speak up, uh, who's willing to, um, I guess, like Jeff said, make changes and uh, always has the best interest of everyone on, 
on whatever they're doing. In terms of school or maybe high school, college, when, what was your first experience with leadership? In, in, in regards to uh, high school, college, um, I, I would say my, my first experience in leadership was um, my senior year. Uh, I going into my senior year, I was uh, I was playing football, but I, I, uh, I discontinued playing. I wanted to focus on my academics um, to get into college, and, um, and and that's another story for another day. But uh, that's what I, I focus on. But many of my classmates who and my my teammates, um, they played their senior year, had a great senior season. Um, however, they didn't know what was next after football. They, you know, many of them like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, you know, as far as college, many of them had the ability to play college ball, but they really didn't understand the process. So at that time I had started recruiting for myself a year prior and I had contacts with different coaches. And so I decided to, to help my friends who didn't know what was next. I was a first generation college student. So I, I only have limited knowledge, but it was, I only had, I had limited knowledge in regards to that process, but it was a little bit more than what my peers had. And so I just took the, the information that I gathered and shared it with them and put them in contact with the coaches that I was communicating with. And, and we were able to help um, a few of them go to college and, um, and get some exposure from my process. And so that particular process pretty much um, uh, was the inception of my nonprofit program called uh, Go Educate Inc. And so that sort of pushed me to the forefront of being a leader, even before I realized it. I mean, I always considered myself a leader. I consider myself someone to move to the beat of their own drum. But that allowed, I, I guess that legitimized, you know, my idea of what a leader was and even my presence within a community because that was in 2006. I know that's a long time ago. But that was in 2006, and 14 years later, I'm still doing that on a much larger capacity where I'm helping students, um, not only within my, my home state of uh, Florida, but I'm helping students throughout the U.S. and we're even helping students uh, globally and in different African nations, such as Nigeria and Ivory Coast and within the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas. And so um, going, that was the first time, you know, that's what I, I, that's what I could say, like, the first situation where I was, you know, I can say that I was a leader in some sense. So from that, let's let's talk about community. So why do you think being involved in the community and being a leader in our community is important? Okay. Um, being a leader in the community is important because uh, I'm, I'm someone that, that believes on affecting change. I, I believe that and um, if we expect to grow, if we expect to improve, you know, there's some changes that, that has to be made and, and we need to evolve. Um, being, uh, I, I always credit my community to where I'm at to this day. And I feel as if that I need to give back. Um, I don't want it to, I, I don't want um, my achievements to represent my community plateauing. I don't want that to be the peak. I always want someone to do better than I did. So like my younger brother, he I, I'm five years older than him. When I graduated and went off to college, I wanted him to be in a better situation. So that was me informing him. And then we started working together saying like, man, the struggles that we went to, let's, let's go back, give to the community, make sure the next group of students, they don't have to go through what we went through. And I feel that by being a leader and um, providing that type of education to your community, you're, you're, you're helping so many people. Like a lot of times people believe that in order to bring about change, there needs to be some type of monetary um, involvement there, but uh, just uh, education, knowledge, you know, that's, that's invaluable. And so that can definitely bring about change in your community. And so uh, being a leader in the community can go a long way. We're talking about just by providing knowledge and information about things that people don't know about, you, you could be, you know, supporting and helping generations without even knowing it, just through words, just through information. Yeah, for sure, Jeff. Thank you for sharing. 
All right, so that brings our conversation to an end. Thank you um, to you guys who are watching this episode of Rock Creek Real Talk. It means a lot. And I hope you learned a couple of things um, throughout this conversation. And before we go, I wanted to make a few announcements. So OLI um, is hiring. If you'd like to become an OLI mentor, please check out our um, PCC Multicultural Center website. We have the application up there or contact our Instagram at Rock Creek MC. And next week, we are going to have another Rock Creek Real Talk and Liz is going to be hosting that. Liz, you want to talk about that? So uh, next week on Tuesday, I'll be hosting episode five of our Rock Creek Real Talk. So just um, uh, just be on our social media and watch out for any posts about it um, so you can know what what we'll be talking about for that episode. Awesome. Well, with that said, I want to thank again all of you for joining, Delina, Liz, and Jeff for coming on. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, let me stop recording. <laughs>